All right, so in our last gaming session, you guys had managed to defeat a, what you would guess is a succubus that had taken over um, the town of Rowanwood um, with the, the expert help of a new halfling companion that helped you navigate your way through the sewers, uh, bypassing uh, many dangers up in the city itself. Um, after that, during the, or I should say, during the uh, adventure through the Baron's Manor, uh, in the basement you rescued uh, a halfling and a gnome by the name of Benny and Mia, uh, who you gave some gold to in exchange for some goods, uh, located somewhere within the uh, basement area you are you were guessing, and it turns out that you did find some uh, equipment to, to help you guys out. Uh, you also found an inquisitor by the name of Justin that uh, you kind of lent your aid to, to for him to basically escape, and you went up, dealt with the, the demonic presence in the manor house, and then spent another week uh, helping out uh, Justin uh, distrib redistribute stolen uh, goods and wealth back to the local populace and some of the surrounding towns in, in the county. Um, at the end of that point, you guys uh, decided to go with uh, Justin and a relatively small uh, legion of armed soldiers uh, back to the capital of Arandia. It's a 10-day uh, trek with uh, a mix of camping and a handful of towns that you'll get to uh, spend time in the inn, um, basically kind of going over future plans, if that's something that you want to take care of before you move on to Arandia, or whatever you intend to do. Um, we're going to open it up uh, where you guys are currently in a coach, a carriage, basically on your way to Arandia. You have just left a small uh, town about three days out of uh, Rowanwood uh, by the name of Elkstead. And you're basically making your way towards Arandia. What kind of coach is it? Can you describe it? Yeah, it's a large uh, redwood uh, coach. Um, fairly long. It's got uh, two large bench seats and then there's space for pass, uh, people to ride up top if they want out in the, out in the open. Uh, the, the driver is up there plus there's about uh, 20 guards that are riding along behind and another 20 that are riding just up ahead. So you're kind of sandwiched <coughs> between two fairly large groups of soldiers. So danger on the road is negligible at this point. Anything that would attack, attack uh, say, lone travelers, isn't going to attack a, a force quite this large. It is currently being drawn by six horses. And the driver's name is Ned, should that matter. <laughs> so, important question, are we there yet? <laughs> I'm not answering. I'm sleeping, kind of half meditating, half sleeping, because this is, I just, I hate being on the road. I'd rather be on the sea. Okay. So, so you're land sick? Yeah. Makes sense. It's been a while. You're riding outside or inside? Inside. Okay. Enjoying the fresh air outside? I'm riding outside. You next to Ned, or are you on one of the... Um, you said there's a, a seat behind him, or...? Yeah, kind of just behind him a little bit, uh, just in front of the luggage rack. Uh, normally it would be where somebody could sit up a little bit higher to kind of look out and stuff like that. The roads here are pretty open, uh, so you don't have to worry too much about like a low branch coming, to, coming across and knocking you off or anything like that. But you can sit just kind of up above Ned just a little bit and it gives you kind of a clear view. Uh, the forests here, the, it, the first part of your part, portion of your trek is through forest, 
but the road itself is cleared well enough that there's really not much of, a, of an overhang over the road. Okay. Um, soon you know that you're going to be entering into mostly rolling uh, hills and plains. Mm -hmm. And it's good weather, you said, outside, so... Uh, yeah, right now the weather is not terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, before you left, it was kind of rainy, uh, general fall, dreary kind of weather. Uh, but over the past two days, it's kind of cleared up, so you have mostly like cloudy skies with, with uh, moments of, of relatively decent sun, sunlight and everything, but it's, it's dry in spite of the fact that there's, there's some cloud cover. Uh, the weather is cold, though. Uh, mostly in the morning, it's, it's fairly brisk, uh, looking at like not quite into the, the freezing kind of weather, but Kind of like here, where it gets into like those mid to low 40s. So I went and has his cloak <laughs> and his cool hat. His cool hat. But, <laughs> <That's something. clears throat> but you are riding up on the, up on the top. Mm -hmm. How about you? Serafina is kind of awkwardly tucked in next to uh, Kara to, for some warmth and really wanting to ask Dagmar about some of her adventures, pestering her. <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to tell where to start. I mean, I, I killed my first creature when I was four. Um, tell me more about that. It was a rat, and uh, my older brother actually brought it into the room just to scare me, and my father was really pissed off at him afterwards. But I managed to kill it with my bare hands. Him. Yeah. It was a thorn and a toy moment. hammer. He brought in a rat, and you know. He knew I really liked rats. I'll pick it up to admire it. And he, goes, and then he stabbed me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I hearing this conversation? Uh, not up there. It's, okay. it's the the rattle of the carriage and everything is pretty loud, so you don't hear much of the conversation that's going on down there, unless you are actively trying to like no, listen in on it. Looking around, but I wanted to make sure. I didn't. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, torment as a result of that, though. You know. Ooh, Dagmar can kill rats. Like. I was four. It seemed like a pretty impressive feat at the time. It's impressive now. I was a vegetarian for a week after that. Because it just the way it... No, no, no. <laughs> now, though, I can, I can appreciate it. Uh, silent for you. The past two days have been kind of rough. The, the, sun, the sun breaks that, uh, that you've seen are, like, overly bright, uh, kind of gives you like really intense migraines uh so you have you've been trying to stay still in. A, only after the first month so it hasn't quite i think after the rising of the first full moon is it full moon? Mm. <laughs> okay it's it's tied directly to the lunar cycle okay as are many things <laughs> but it's only been two days but it's it gives you kind of deep headaches and you you kind of been staying to the interior of the, the yeah. carriage during travel and everything. Dagmar's pretty sure you're just hung over and haven't been sharing. Um, <laughs> there's there's been a few like bickery moments between, you know, curtains closed, curtains open kind of moments. Um, Kara and the halfling are, are way more interested in having the curtains closed because one for warmth, two for sleeps. <laughs> yeah. She likes to look at the countryside because she hasn't seen it before. Uh, I also enjoy trying to stand on top of the wagon while we're driving, though. So if I ever need, you know, wind and air, you can just kick me out. <laughs> All right. But unless there's anything that any things that you guys specifically want to discuss in character, we will probably move forward a little bit. Um, but please, if there are things that you want to roleplay, please do so. So what are we going to do after we collect the writs? I see as as Dagmar saying that once he's leaning over going What? <laughs> <laughs> money? Money automatically piques yeah. your interest. <laughs> are you talking about the money? We're just, you know, talking about how we would split each other's shares if anything were to happen to us. Any accidents. Oh, like you falling off the wagon? <laughs> <laughs> but so she would just drink more? Yeah. Fall off the wagon. Easier to steal from. I mean, what? I mean, what? <laughs> so I kind of wake up when they're talking about this, and um, well, 
I have a house there. We could. In Arondia? Yeah. Nice. So we can probably go back there and figure out what we want to do from there. Free dates. Free dates? How many couches do you have? Um, enough. Okay. That's a... Cool. Do you have a lot of uh, family there? Why do you just randomly own a house <laughs> in this massive city? Um, I was born there and raised there. Uh, my family's gone though. Oh. Oh, well, that's shitty. I'm sorry. Sorry. Seraphina lightly pets you. Pat your head. Oh, after the Ritz. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't think Justin has anything more, any more need of us. Which just kind of happenstance that we found him in a dungeon anyway. Well, it's true, and I appreciate it. Oh, hey, Justin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, he just walks by and sticks his head in the window. I mean, after the Ritz, I haven't, I haven't been home in about five years, so. Are you sure you still have a No, 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 I do. I, I totally have a house, but I um, I left in a hurry, kind of. I don't think my parents' death was an accident, oh. so. Did you fleeing, kill them? Fleeing the air. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Is there more to your dark secret? We don't it's not a dark secret. So, uh, I was born in Arondi, and my parents, uh, they used to be adventurers and sailors, and they settled down in Arondi to have uh, my siblings and myself and they started a shipping company and they were really successful at it and um, got really wealthy really quick and uh, one of the other shipping companies in, have you ever, no one's ever been to Arondia, I mean Justin. Well Justin has but he's yeah. just kind of listening, um, doesn't want to interrupt. So they, um, one of the bigger companies wanted to buy my mom's mom and dad's company they refused and they were always kind of there was always tension mm -hmm. between the different shipping companies and we were on vacation and out at sea and our boat something happened with it I don't know so it's terrible yep what about your siblings uh they all perished the only one got out that moment, Serafina flings her arms around you and hugs you, <laughs> sniffling. Um, so I, I left my house in the care of our like um, caretakers of the house when we lived there. So like our, they took, you know, their family friend, they worked for us, the O'Briens. But slaves. I left in a hurry. No, not slaves. <laughs> I left in a hurry. and So... I might not be welcome back there. I don't know if it's been a long enough time. And so, if we go to my estate and anything needs to be done or find help, I wouldn't mind having some backup. Justin just kind of looks at you. He's like, have you been keeping in touch with the, you said the O'Briens? Mm hmm. Hmm. Through, through uh, correspondence, I would assume, if you haven't been back in five years. Mm hmm. Good. Good. I mean, as much as I can, I've been traveling a lot, but... Is that why you want to own a ship? Mm-hmm. It's kind of, um... Uh, the goal of mine is to get a ship. If Sarah was looking at Serafina's, like, that's... I mean, Wensu knows that, or when you Wensu. But, yeah, I've been, been trying to... You see little eyes right peeking up out of your armpit. I've been trying to, <laughs> to make enough gold adventuring to buy my own ship. What happened to, um... The rest of your parents' fleet did the and the rest of the did the other company end up with it? Yeah, basically. Well, I'll kick anyone's ass place. that we need to kick. Okay. I'll hold them, you punch them. <laughs> Thank you. Losses like that usually incur quite a bit of debt. I'm not surprised that you you lost the ships. Luckily it sounds like you still have a home though, so that's yep. good. Where is this home located? <laughs> Is in the bay. Yeah, Bayside. And Bayside. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Bayside has got a lot of various merchant houses, mm -hmm. and uh, of course the various shops and everything. It's a wonderful shopping district. I'm sure you'll enjoy it quite a bit. Hey, there's, a, there's a 
there's some good stuff to see there. It's a, it's a nice town. I enjoy it quite a bit. Of course, when I get home, then I am going to have to do business. Of course, there's a lot of things piling up on my my plate, so to speak. He was there out of character. He was there investigating, correct? Mm -hmm. What was going on? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, do you? Where do you live, Columbia? Oh, I live within the chapel. Mm -hmm. I remember the gardens. Those are Yes. I was, my family was never wealthy enough to live within the gardens. Mm, no. Now, I grew up in the borough for a, a portion of my life. Uh, originally, I'm actually from Reinhold, mm. but my family moved to uh, Camoria to pursue their, their religious studies. Mm. My brother and I uh, kind of just kind of got swept up in, in the church. Mm. Of course, he was gifted and I wasn't. But that doesn't mean I can't serve and do my part. You do good work, Justin. I didn't like to think that I am a decent investigator. <laughs> like you got captured and all of your cards taken away and you were only there for like a day. To be fair, she was scary. Yeah? Yeah, she was very scary. They were eating people. <laughs> so, um, Justin, you're going to have to go back and let them know what happened out there, and who takes over that land now that the county is gone? Um, that will wind up being up to the queen for the most part. Uh, he ha does have other family members, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, depending on their standing, uh, it might just get passed on to uh, a cousin or perhaps uh, a younger sibling. He does have have a sister, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't know much of those things. It's, it's beyond my beyond my duties to to really keep track of that kind of thing. It's above your pay grade. Can I make a check to see if like? Um in correspondence with the caretakers of the house that would have told me anything about like the politics having changed in the five years that I was gone or sure. things Go change that quickly in a place like uh, that? They can. The politics swing pretty wildly uh, depending on because you have some pretty major factions. Mm -hmm. One you have the, the general nobility which is com mostly compiled of the various like noble families of the surrounding uh, counties and uh, duchies and all that kind of thing. Um, they all have homes and land and everything within the, the city for when they come to do uh, business with the courts mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Plus you have the, the part of that is also with the, the upper class rich merchant families. <clears throat> they may not necessarily have <coughs> anything in the way of title but they more than make up for it with their, their wealth. Mm. So they can kind of easily buy their way into the the noble uh, society and get the court's ear and that kind of thing. Um, but you also have the church. Mm -hmm. The church itself is pretty notable for pretty much running the kingdom. Uh, the queen does have power. Uh, they The church does technically answer to her as she is is by definition by the law and everything considered the head of the church but of course there are various cardinals and bishops and everything that have their own opinions and ideas and the politics within the church can be almost as brutal as the politics within the various noble houses the queen however is pretty well known for being a level-headed, uh, trustworthy, uh, kind of a, a, a beacon of hope for, for the common people. Uh, she runs a lot of uh, uh, social programs and stuff that she's instated to basically try to help distribute food and stuff for the, the, the poor and, and stuff like that. Basically trying to help the church, help influence the church into doing more outreach type of programs. Uh, there's always been kind of a public school 
system because education is relatively important uh, within the kingdom and has been for a long time. But there was always kind of that discrepancy between the the noble families and what schools and stuff that they went to versus like the low income schools and all that kind of stuff. So they've been trying to do some stuff to kind of get some a little bit more balance in all of that. It's hard, of course. I mean, would I know through talking to her going into this, like, if it was more correct back then? And that would, or not really, now, or, I mean, um, would it have anything to do like the merchants, like a big merchant, like my parents, getting like basically taken out? Wouldn't someone have sanctioned that? I mean, I know the big uh, other big companies, but well, it, you're not really certain. Mm -hmm. uh, your the, sh the shipping company itself, most of its properties were wound up being auctioned off to cover various expenses and everything, and were bought, uh, purchased by, by two other, mostly by two other uh, rival companies, uh, both of which are still uh, active. And then one, of course, there was like a couple of smaller uh, budding companies that, that bought up stuff. Uh, but you still own the house, and there's a warehouse that kind of pretty much helps pay for uh, the land taxes and the, basically provides food for um, the O'Briens. The warehouse is basically rented out. You own it, but it gets leased mm -hmm. out to other companies okay. so that you can kind of make some sort of income off of that. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot, but it's enough to cover, that's basically been covering the expensive for the past, past five years. Oh. No, good. No. <laughs> I was going to say, so you're at, you were rich ones. Well, I mean, you're wrapped in rags now, though. Rags to riches. Mm -hmm. Riches to rags. Uh, yeah, we were. We were very wealthy. I mean, I didn't. It's just how I grew up there, though. And I know after after everyone was gone, they just there was nothing there for me, so I just left. Go get get money and try and get a shift and maybe start over. It's admirable that you had a purpose after that, though. A lot of people will come out of that just completely lost. Um, I think my practices with martial arts is helping with that. Zen. What's up? Yeah. Um, so, over the remainder of the next uh, five and a half-ish days, you, you continue the journey uh, ever eastwards towards Arandia, following along the coastline, um, until you reach an, an area known as, as the uh, Western Hills. Uh, the Western Hills are not exactly on the far western side, obviously, of the continent. But it kind of marks the western boundaries of what is considered Arandia. Uh, the Western Hills has a, a relatively small community, mostly of like uh, farmers and ranchers and uh, crafts folk that kind of live outside the city, kind of on the outskirts of uh, the far reaches of the, the city itself. Um, the, the Western Hills, as you're kind of moving through it, it's mostly just kind of rolling uh, hills with uh, farms started across it, mostly broken up by uh, lines uh, of trees and stuff that kind of mark off uh, boundaries between various properties, fields, that kind of thing. Occasionally you'll see like a low uh, stacked stone wall or whatever in an area where there's maybe not quite as many trees to, to create a property proper property line or whatever. Um, and the population here gets to be a, a little bit more dense. On the, on the road itself, you hadn't really seen much in the way of, of travelers, uh, except for a handful of people going one way or the other. Um, but now that you are getting closer to Arandia, you are seeing uh, more farmers with ox-drawn carts uh, carrying various goods either to their farms or from their farms to uh, the local market. 
and you see a few people and a handful of them will wave at you as you kind of move along. Um, the people here seem to be friendly. Uh, they don't, not overly chatty, they don't try to stop you in the, the carriage or anything. It's because it's a, got a military presence and everything. It's obviously on official business. So they're not trying to, to share news or gain any kind of gossip on anything that's been going on. But they all take, seem to take notice as you're, as you're passing through. Um, it is now kind of mid to late fall and the sun does seem to dip lower and lower into the, the, the skies earlier every, every night. And at this point, it's, you're about maybe two hours from Arandia itself, the actual city walls. Um, and the sun is starting to kind of get low in the sky and kind of getting that nice orange uh, glow to the east and the dark, deep, deep blue of the sky off into the, to the east. Um, but as you kind of come up over one of the, the last hills uh, in, in West Hills area, you kind of come up over the hill and you can see the sprawling city out before you. Um, it's just kind of glistening and glittering with various lights from uh, street lamps and homes and and the parks have uh, oil-based uh, lamps in some of the richer neighborhoods they ha actually have uh, magical ever-burning uh, lamps and stuff that they they have placed within the, the those particular districts but what you notice more than anything else as you're coming up is this huge beacon of light that emanates from the very center of the city where you can see the dome of the of the the palace itself just glows with almost a brilliant sunlight glow that just kind of shoots up into the sky and just kind of lights up uh, much of the area around it. Uh, near the the palace you can see the the two spire the two bell towers of the Grand Temple of Light. The Grand Cathedral is there and you can hear as the even at this distance, the, the ringing of the various church bells uh, as everybody's basically being called to prayer at the setting of the sun, which is pretty much common. Uh, for you, you know that uh, in Arandia, the, the church bells ring at sunrise, noon, and then at sunset. And it's always time for the actual seasons and everything, not set times mm -hmm. for... They, they, they don't ring like after sunset or before sunrise or anything like that, but always at sun first rays of light and at the last rays of, of sunset. But you can just kind of hear this, this ringing music from just the hundreds of various uh, bells and stuff through the city, uh, even at this great distance. You can see um, the road from here um, as it kind of goes down the hill and kind of levels out into a, a kind of a plain where you see some more farms are kind of dotted out across the area. Um, you can see that the road here is a little bit more well maintained. Um, it's cobblestone. It's been, it's obviously upkept a little bit more. And you can see lines of carts and stuff, people on foot, uh, still coming and going from the city itself. Um, the, uh, Justin kind of looks to you guys and is like, "Well, we are almost there, and I hope that uh, you have a place. That you have your home, but you seemed somewhat reluctant about coming into the city. Do you intend to, to seek possibly uh, stay in an inn, or do you intend to go just straight home?" Uh, it might be better to wait till tomorrow, get a good night's sleep at an inn, get some food. Plus, if the O'Briens are old, you don't want to scare them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. So, yeah, well, probably. Is there an inn close to where, I mean, we intend to get the Ritz from you? And um, in the, in the uh, Crown's Ward, you won't find any, any inns, but there are numerous inns dotted across the, the landscape of Arandia, uh, depending on your predilection for the, the style of establishment you want to stay in. Are there any um, The uh, Boar and Bear uh, has a rather robust history with adventurers. And so that might be a place that you guys might find interesting. If you want something a little bit more low-key and, and 
off the uh, beaten path. Of course, there's numerous inns within the boroughs. Um, there's the seaside inn and tavern that's in the Bayside district. Uh, it might be a little bit pricey as it's near where uh, many of the travelers arriving by ship uh, first, the, the first inn that most many of those people would see. Um, there is a dwarven uh, inn that will be passing by just inside the gates here on the on the western side of Arandia. Um, I don't know much about it. It's relatively new um, as far as the city is concerned. But uh, it may suit your taste. It's just a matter of what what it is that you wish to do. Um, well, the one in Bayside, no, no offense to you, Dagmar. Uh, we may not want to stay at that one. It's a little bit more pricey. Clientele is probably no offense to you. But it's the rich, rich <laughs> merchant area. Maybe we should go to something where we won't stand out so much. I like the as boring a group bear. Of the boring bear sounds nice. The boring bear. <laughs> <laughs> what Birdman said. No, Wensu, that sounds like a good plan. I mean, we're a band of adventurers, I don't think. I mean, Sometimes easy money. Well, I mean, you're not you're not getting easy money off of adventurers. They're the ones going to try and get easy money off of you. The place on Bayside, I have had a lifetime's worth of hoity-toity people, so I am fine with going to the boring bear. Justin's like, it's it's the, the boar and bear. Never That's mind. what I said. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever you do. I somehow um, managed to crack a smile. <laughs> 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 whatever you do, uh, tomorrow at some point when you're ready to turn in your writs, uh, please uh, swing by and he will basically give you a, a written out address for a place for you to go. Mm -hmm. It's in the... It's actually not far from looking at your, looking at where the address is and everything. You know, it's in the uh, the West Fields, or sorry, East North Fields district, which was at one time just like part of the outlying farming community. But as the city grew, the walls just kind of expanded out, and those went from being farms to the houses and all that kind of stuff. The, that's also where the born bear. And is located as well. So what's the popul population? Population. The population. Um, the, it's, the, it's, it's, the the number of people that actually live within the capital is a little is about a million and a half. So it is a really really large metropolis of a city. It's very very big, uh, but it also has a very large number of people that just are coming in, coming and going. Mm -hmm at any given time. So the trade, uh, the Bayside District is almost always like super crowded. Uh, there's the um, the Scholars Terrace, which has got one of the, the basically the largest uh, university in the kingdom is there, along with two separate mage towers. Um, so it's it, that area is, is almost always kind of bustling with, with trade and people coming and going from there. Then of course the the gardens are usually relatively quiet because nobody has any reason to go there unless they're specifically seeking out one of the various noble houses, mm -hmm. or basically unless they have business there, they generally speaking people don't go through there. Uh, the boroughs is one of the older districts in the in the city um, all the houses are like really packed close together uh, with only occasionally being like a narrow alleyway between some of the buildings and anything so you basically have like your row houses and stuff like that like your brownstones that kind of thing are all kind of just packed tightly into those areas uh, whereas the kind of to the the um, southwest and northwest those districts are a little bit more spread out but still um, as far as many places are concerned, still fairly tightly packed together. Right. And of course you have the, the north and the south wharfs. Um, tend to be a little bit more seedy. Uh, they are industrial type places. 
It's where the shipyards and, of course, most of the, the ship trade and stuff comes through there. It's one of your, where, the warehouse you own is actually in the South Wharf. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Um, question for the DM. What kind of extra damage would that kind of weapon do? Would None. that be a save, save versus stickiness? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> save versus diabetes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, as you get closer and closer to the, the city itself, um, you start seeing uh, more and more crowds kind of uh, passing by more and more people until you get to the, the gates themselves, which are currently standing just wide open. And it's a broad area of about 60 feet wide and about 40 feet tall. It just kind of leads through this uh, 40 foot thick wall that leads into the city itself. You kind of pass through it and there's various guards and stuff out in, in, the, in the front and everything, but everybody just kind of makes way as you <coughs> enter into the city. Um, just inside the gates, uh, at this point, you will be entering into uh, the southwest district, and you are we, see. Are we the, coming from the east? You're coming from the west. From the west. Okay. Traveling east, uh, you're entering into the west southwest district, where you see most of the military uh, that's basically been escorting you this whole time. Kind of branches off and goes towards uh, the the barracks and some of the some of the local. Uh, um, their, their own homes and that kind of thing. They just kind of break off. Whereas the carriage continues on to the uh, Crown's Ward, as Justin is going to be res uh, reporting to the cathedral itself. As you're kind of making and winding your way through the city, um, the roads here are relatively wide, giving plenty of room for carriages to, to pass by one another on, on the streets. And you see people kind of walking around uh, enjoying the kind of early evening like meals and stuff at various restaurants and cafes young couples on like courting couples doing their their things on you see a handful of children uh, still out playing but only a, a very small number of them but you can hear calls of parents basically calling their children to come home for evening meal and all that kind of stuff uh, you pass through yet another wall. Uh, this wall is much smaller, looks a lot older. Uh, this wall is part of the original walls, the defensive walls of the original city. Uh, so it's mostly there for, as a statement, that you are changing from one area to another. Basically from the new section of town to, to old town. But this particular wall, as you're passing through the gates, you see that there are a number of guards uh, standing around, and they're all in, decked out in these very polished gold and silver breastplates with long white uh, capes, um, spears with kind of a, almost a, a, that seem to be emanating light as they have uh, a magical flame that flickers off of the, the, the heads of the spears. They each have shields that have a... Uh, so it has a uh, goblet that has flame coming out of the top of it, uh, basically resting in uh, above a crown below. And these are the lights watch. They're basically the, the city guard for, for the town. And they're standing watch over the crown ward, uh, which as you enter in, you see it goes from this kind of somewhat tightly packed community to a very broad open courtyard where you see uh, granite uh, paving stones have been laid out in this very huge uh, area between the cathedral and the palace of eternal light. So it's just this big uh, city square basically with a large statue in the center of it of the god of representation of the god Kalmor and he's holding out a goblet like this which to you guys is huge. It's probably 40 feet in diameter at the top and it's just got this flame kind of roaring out of it. And you see the palace to one side facing the cathedral to the other. And you see people are just kind of walking around. Some of them are coming, are now returning from their evening mass at the cathedral. Um, you see a carriage with that uh, bears the royal 
seal, which is the same as what was on the uh, shields of the guards that you saw, making its way from one side of the cathedral towards the palace. And you can pretty much guess that that's probably the queen herself. Uh, the, ca the carriage that you're in kind of comes to a stop uh, towards the back half of the uh, cathedral and Justin gets out and has holds the door for you guys to basically get out, gather your, your gear and everything. He's like, is there anything I can do for you before we part company for the evening? What time would be a good time to meet up tomorrow to go over the Ritz? Uh, just arrive at that particular house whenever whenever you're ready. My brother will be there. I'm uh, Definitely, I may, I may not. But either way, good show up whenever your, you wish. Good luck with your uh, to-do list. Uh, uh, it will be very, very busy. I'll have to go s check my offices and see what my superiors have in store for me from here on out. Well, let us know if you need help killing anything or, you know, plan on getting stuck in a dungeon again. We'll be there, man. I will definitely call upon you if I need aid. You have been truly valuable friends and allies in this endeavor. Now, I bid you farewell. I hug you. Bows. He's, oh, he's just kind of <laughs> awkward. He's like, bro, Pat. He's like, thanks. He turns and goes into the building. Goes into the back side of the cathedral where you're guessing there's probably some uh, offices and stuff are back there as well as the. He's gonna hit the espresso the machine first. Then. Priests. So probably. Is this basically, also a temple to Calmore, as well. Yeah, the the cathedral is a, is is the is a huge temple to Calmore, and then of course the the palace of Eternal Light is on the other side of the this massive courtyard. Uh, the courtyard is probably about two hundred yards square. Square. Yeah. At this time of day, are there still like clerics or other various people working and open to the public? Uh, you see people are leaving the cathedral. You're not certain if they're trying to close up or anything of that nature. But you can more than welcome to, to check it out. Um, I want to check something out inside real quick. Um, if you guys figure out how we're going to get to the... Um, the boar and bear, which seems like what we're uh, going to head for. I will meet back up with you guys out here shortly. I'm going to grab one of the guards or the soldiers nearby okay. and just ask them, hey, how far is it to get to the uh, the boring bear? The boar and bear? Sure. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's a pretty good walk from here. I would recommend possibly catching one of the, uh, the uh, carriages to get to that side of town, but if you go straight past the the palace there, there's a gate that leads into the uh, the north the uh, what is it the North Fields district, Wait. and you're just gonna pretty much follow that road all the way to the gate. So like a 20 minute walk, 40 minute walk, probably about 45 minutes to walk there. Yeah, it's about it's about three miles. Eek. All right. Are you up for that much walking, or do you want to ride a carriage some more? Um, we should probably get to the inn quicker, right, than 45 minutes from now. Yeah. I have stumpy legs. It'll take me a long time. That's true. To walk. We could oh, carry you. That's true. I do like to be carried. <laughs> it's up to you guys. You want to... You can roll, too. So you, uh... Get a feel for the city on the way there? You need to do stuff tonight? No. Or is everybody going to be doing the nighttime prayer stuff? There's an angry person. When to mimics his voice. But no. Is there going to be nighttime? Like the, you said, you wanted to go inside. Are you going inside tonight? Well, right now, real quick, just to ask quest questions. He's got I'm not, poopy. I'm not going to be long. I don't oh, think. Okay. Well, I'll see if I can flag us out of the carriage. I'm going to bumpy carriage ride. Right. Does anybody go follow with him, or is he going by himself? I'll I'll, I'll walk behind him to see what he's doing. <laughs> okay. All right, so you go up, and the front of the, the front of the cathedral has uh, five different doors, basically just lined up across the front, all of which are currently now thrown open. The center set is the largest set of the doors, with the the two sets on either side of it are they're just slightly smaller. Uh, so the the center set is basically the grand entrance, uh, but they're all currently open, and as you walk in through the the doors, kind of fighting the the various crowds of people. You see a number of, 
acolytes and and clerics and just general uh, members of the of the church itself, kind of greeting or basically uh, well wishing people on their evenings or answering questions or giving small blessings or basically giving advice to whoever is basically as asking for it as they're leaving the the chapel. Um, but you kind of push past that part and you see that they're uh, near the center of kind of like this this entryway is a large stone basin with cold clear water in front of it. Um, you know that that's obviously like a, a basin of holy water. Uh, you move past that into the grand cathedral itself and you, you see uh, rows and rows and rows of pews that kind of like uh, just kind of spread out. And you see that there's a handful of people still kind of sitting, praying, scattered throughout, but only maybe maybe a half dozen at most. And you see there is an what looks to be a, an older uh, cleric way up north near the front. He's wearing uh, uh, red and golden robes with the, the oversized bishop hat. Yeah. And it's got like a, a staff that's kind of leaning up against him at the top of which has a chalice that has a magical flame th flowing out of it. But it just seems to be resting on his shoulder as he's flipping through, through a, a rather large tome up on a podium at the very, very front of the church. I will there are any number of, of other people that you can approach here if you want. Okay. Um, he likes to read like you. <laughs> so do I notice anyone who looks like they're free? Um, you see one group that's, or uh, one particular alkalite that looks like he might be, or technically she, might be finishing up with uh, a, couple, a farmer and uh, his younger son or whatever as they're kind of discussing. Uh, just in passing, you kind of overhear that they're, the farmer's talking about trying to get his son um, inducted into the, the, the clergy. You know, a lot of people here kind of see that as a way to basically give their, give their children a better life. It's kind of like going to college or getting into like a really good school. The church here holds a lot of power, so getting into the church is kind of, kind of a, a stepping stone to, right. to, to elevating yourself above being just a simple dirt farmer. Well, farming but, dirt is but she finishes nice. up with him, and they kind of go out of the out of towards the the front doors of the chapel, and she makes eye contact with you, and she steps forward. Uh, she has uh, kind of long red hair that's currently pulled back into kind of like a loose ponytail uh, with a little bit of a simple braid that kind of comes around the from the front down around the sides kind of like little loops uh, she's wearing a simple white and gold uh, robe with a with a red and gold sash around it she just kind of approaches you with her hands together is like how can I help you my brother so before I answer do I notice like when you mentioned that you actually mentioned it to me because uh, I was trying to see if I noticed that once he followed me, but so uh, I'm, yeah, he's, yeah, I'm assuming you're not trying to make it sneaky. You're not kind of there. no, just annoying. But um, <laughs> so I am gonna try and keep this as quiet as I can, so that once you can't hear me. But you know, if he does, okay. he does. Uh, she notices that you you seem kind of tentative uh, about people overhearing you, and she's like, "Would you like to to speak with someone in one of the confession booths?" Well, I don't need to confess, but some privacy would be nice. They serve <laughs> just as well for that. Please, follow me. And she kind of leads you through up towards like the front corner. There's like a series of booths. This is very much just like a, a Catholic church. If you've ever been in like some of the major Catholic cathedrals and stuff. They got like the little confessionals and everything up there. And she, she opened, she kind of very taps one, checks it to see if it, this one is available. I will make sure one of the, the priests join you very shortly. Okay. You kind of go in and it's it's kind of quiet and dark and somewhat claustrophobic. There's a uh, kind of a mesh of carved wood, a lattice work of wood, and you can see on the other side there's like a dark curtain that's kind of pulled over it. And there's like a little bit of a lattice work that lets in just a, the most meager amount of light through it that kind of shines basically just right across your face but otherwise it's just kind of dark and 
So I do have another question. Um, since I have that intelligent ring that's also cursed, is there any pushback from it right now? Because it doesn't know what I'm... Because it will remove everything if I... <laughs> <laughs> it is... It is the, if you Are you attempting to communicate with it? No. It, it, it just... You get the very sense that it's it's angry about something. Okay. It's been very quiet. Okay. Dumbass, put this necklace on. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just mad at your luck. Because you keep it like, like the orb thingy came at you. and <laughs> No, Dibs has been called. You are not there. I still think it's funny. All right, so you are sitting in, the, in there, and, and just a few minutes you hear in the booth next to you, you hear a door open. See, hear some, some, a little bit of rustling of robes and everything, and some creaking of, of a wood bench. Then the curtain slides open, and you hear this voice from the other side. How may I help you, my son? And the voice is that of a probably middle-aged gentleman, you would guess. Um, but you can't really make out any features. All right. Um this is kind of embarrassing to say, but I'm an adventurer and I have come across a curse. My son, I item. should let you know. <laughs> I understand the, the, the curses of the mortal flesh, <laughs> and we do have clerics that can heal you of any diseases that you may have picked up. We get adventurers that come in here from time to time with, with said problems. Is he laughing? I'm not actually laughing. Me as a character is laughing. He's just uh, beats me as a player, so I'm not a character. <gasps> no, but um, I just I've come across a cursed item and uh, oh, sorry, I oh, should yeah. not have assumed. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm sure you come across those kinds of people more so than cursed items, but it is true. I was hoping to be able to get it removed and taken care of, but I don't know if you are able to do that here. Um, it's like the number one I think I think I can help you. <laughs> and he, it's like, meet me outside here. Okay. Mm, you hear the, the curtain closes back up and uh, you step out of the, the booth and you see this uh, short uh, human, but relatively short, maybe about five, three-ish uh, uh, gentleman, probably about Late thirties, early forties. Uh, he's got the the very the the shaved head. The friar with the, look. Yeah, the the friar look. Uh, he's wearing um, some red and gold uh, robes with a white sash. And he's got a, a cleric's medallion around him, actually marking him as an actual cleric, mm -hmm. as opposed to just a priest. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of looks at you. He's like, um. What item are we talking about here? And he's just kind of looking over. Is perhaps the ring? Well, the necklace, mainly. He's like, may I? And he kind of reaches out and touches it and kind of looks it over. He's like, oh dear. Well, let's see what I can do. And he clutches his medallion and he reaches out and he basically places his hand palm down on your chest with, the, with your necklace under it. And he begins to, to mutter some prayers. And then all of a sudden there's just a burst of kind of greenish black energy that just, and he goes flying backwards and you go flying backwards from him and you, you look at it and you see him like clutching his hand and he looks at you he's like, that is truly dark magics that you have. And you see his hand is kind of, the, the veins are all black and it's almost like a gangrenous, almost rot look to his skin. He's like... I'm afraid I cannot help you with that. Do you know anyone who do, who would? Come back tomorrow. Let me do some research. I'll talk to the bishop. He would obviously have more information than I, and if necessary, we'll go all the way to a grand cardinal. That is a, a foul, evil device, That's a big and you should be careful. Oh. You seem casting basically healing spells on his own restoration yeah. on, on his hand and everything and it kind of goes back to its normal color he's like 
Please be careful. Well, if I thank him, then I just turn and walk out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you still in the cathedral? <laughs> well, th that display catches the attention of pretty much everyone. Your shiny is broken. <sighs> you carry a heavy burden around your neck. <laughs> a heavy burden. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <Sorry. a> bird man. <laughs> <laughs> Am I successful yeah. in acquiring a carriage for yeah. hire? Yeah, you, you flag down her, a carriage. You got her Uber? Yeah, I got <laughs> the Uber, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, you flag down a carriage, and for uh, five silver, it will carry you all the way through town to the uh, uh, bear, uh, boring bear. To the boring bear! Wait, where's Silent? You see Silent emerge from the, the uh, chapel, and he's... I guess got a, a kind of gloomier look on his face. <laughs> like he's he's not never like yeah he's a warlock, but he's not ne really been like an angsty or dark um, of character person. But now he's visibly irritated and agitated about it about something. Are you blue down in the <laughs> Silent, get in the wagon. Let's go have some drinks. That'll cheer you up. <laughs> Cheer on you, love. Yeah. All right. So you get into the carriage and it begins rattling its way through, through town. Um, Is it five silver per person? No, just a total. I'll pay. All right. Uh, the uh, carriage rattles its way through the courtyards to the other side, and you see some people kind of outside. Um, even though it's it's now well past sunset. It doesn't seem like the city itself has, has really stopped very much. Certain neighborhoods, which are mostly res residential, seem to be a little bit quieter. But any place where there's like uh, pubs and uh, restaurants or theaters or any number of other places of entertainment, they all seem to still be open. And there's just a fairly large population of people kind of making their way through the town. Yes, dear. Two questions. One, um, what season is it? Fall. Two. Um, uh, as we're passing through the streets and we're going to our destination, Dagmo wants to be keeping an eye out. Like, how often do you see homeless people? Are there more rich people than poor people? Are there poor people hungry? That kind of thing. Okay. Basically, it's because I'm assuming we'll pass through a couple different types of neighborhoods as we get there. It's three miles, so. Well, as soon as you exit from the the Crown's Ward. You enter into a section of town simply uh, known as as the the North Fields. Uh, it's a rather large district, which you know of. It's an old district, but neither rich nor poor. It's kind of just kind of a, a general example of of life in in the grand city. Um, as you're kind of making your way along, the the road kind of turns and moves around through various uh, neighborhoods and everything. Uh, you don't see much in the way of like really, really poor people, like straight up homeless people, at least not along this, this main thoroughfare. Because it seems like this is still one of the main roads at least basically from the heart of the city towards uh, the northern gate. Okay. Do we have a map? Yeah. Sounds like I thought you would never ask. I like maps. It's not a very complete to. map, but. Oh, wait, sorry. You're moving through wet, uh, Northwest District. I forget that's on the way back. But anyway, as you see, here's the, the Crown's Ward, is this, this center section here. And you basically came in through here, through the boroughs up around this way and then kind of into here and then kind of left out through here and kind of following along this wall into the the north fields and then towards a, a gate over here how long does it take us to get over there uh by, by carriage? carriage it takes you about 20 minutes yeah. but uh as you're kind of making your way through you see numerous houses and stuff through here 
um, most of which are probably two-story cottage style houses nothing overly large uh, you don't see much in the way of like what you would consider like rich family types of houses these all seem to be uh, middle to lower middle class uh, families you know that uh, at least when you were here before living here before uh, most of the truly poor lived outside the actual city um, the northern uh, outside the gates of the of the Northfield district is a little talked about area that's kind of around the wall and over closer towards the the seaside it's just simply called Mud Hollow and it's kind of not really a shanty town but it is not it, it is where the poor live. Is this um, like cliff? No, it's, it's it just goes down to kind of a rocky beach. beach. But as you get closer and closer, uh, you start to hear music, uh, fairly loud music coming from a sort of fairly large inn that rests just slightly up a, a small hill just inside the city gates and the carriage kind of pulls to a halt and the driver takes his fare and uh, quickly picks up another fare of somebody traveling from the gates area to somewhere else within the city uh, these building itself the inn is very large with many uh these tall steeply uh peaked uh roofs that kind of slope out but there's just several of them. It just seems kind of almost haphazardly stacked together. It was almost like it used to be one structure, then they added another structure, and then more and more and more until it just kind of spread out and kind of took over the crown of this small hill. Uh, it sets up maybe about 10 feet above street level and about 30 feet up from the, the road itself. Uh, looking around directly across from it, you see that there is a stable there's still a blacksmith in there hammering away and you see uh, adventurers that's coming in through the north gate or dropping off their horses and negotiating like the, the uh, stable uh, fees and everything. Uh, you see a number of other visitors that are kind of leaving town heading uh, kind of in, in poorer dress uh, carrying large uh, sacks of what you guess are like food goods like uh, grains and stuff like that but they're just kind of carrying sacks and they're just kind of talking amongst themselves as they head out of the the out through the gate and they kind of make a sharp corner to follow it follow it around to the side is there a lot of crime in the city between just people traveling between different uh crime is not really a big thing everybody knows that crime happens but not in the open for the most part as you look around you see numerous guards uh, all dressed with the the uh, gold and silver breastplates and the white cloaks trimmed in gold with the lit up spears and the shields and everything patrolling hmm. uh, you it, they are pretty large numbers of them so just generally speaking in the streets there are a lot of guards and a lot of people on watch but they're used to adventuring groups, so we're not going to be yeah, you're, nobody's, not following us. Nobody's following you. Nobody's harassing you. Uh, as you make your way up a set of uh, set of steps, then forward a little bit up along a path, then the final set of steps as you approach a large uh, oak door, set of double doors with round windows in it. You push those doors open, and you enter into a warm and brightly lit tavern area. You see kind of a ring of uh, tables and chairs kind of up on like, uh, kind of like they kind of go out around you with a slightly lowered area that goes up to a bar directly out across from you. You see that there are some stairs that lead up to balcony areas where there are more tables and, and people are sitting up there. You see a number of tables down in this lower section. You see a number of people playing like card games or just sitting there and drinking and having a good time uh, while above the bar on, on the balcony above the bar you can see uh, there are a number of 
of musicians up there playing a variety of instruments. Looks like there's probably about seven or eight people up there right now. Uh, a couple of them are singing. Uh, there's like uh, uh, fiddles and guitars and and lutes and just drums. Uh, I'm some, rolling my eyes as I walk into this place because it's just loud. It is very loud. It's There's busy. no doubt about it. Uh, and there are people of all manner of places Ilk. in this in this particular <laughs> tavern. You see, um, immediately off to one of the tables near the door, you see three half orcs, uh, all dressed in these hide armors and everything, and they're just kind of talking amongst themselves. Uh, happily in in orcish while a, another relatively large fellow with kind of a kind of a chalky grayish skin with these various black markings and everything kind of almost like tattoos over his body and his large bald head and he just kind of towers over even these half orcs and he's just sitting there drinking with them and conversing with them in in, in orcish they just kind of paying really no attention well, there's another set of another table almost directly across. So basically, as you come in the in the through the door, there's a table on this side with the half orcs and a Goliath. There's a table on this side that has five dwarves, and they're just kind of drinking. And every once in a while, they kind of grumble at one another about the half orcs on the other side of the row. But they don't seem to be starting any kind of a ruckus. They just seem to be kind of unhappy that there's half orcs in the in the tavern with them. Uh, you kind of walk down and you see mixed match groups of, of varying adventurers like half elves and elves with humans and halflings and gnomes uh, just scattered all about. But there are a number of empty tables both on the lower section and the upper section. Hmm. Behind the bar, which you see has got this big, huge silver mirror on the back side of it with numerous bottles of varying colors of uh, glass and, and liquors and everything and there's like a whole section of wall that has like six different casks each one of them tapped with a different type of ale mead or beer whatever you would hope to have kind of off to that side and you see this halfling kind of running back and forth on like a, a runner behind the bar that basically lifts him up basically the floor behind the bar is slightly higher than the floor out in the front so he's basically at, at human level for all of his various customers and everything just kind of running back and forth and you see that there are two other halflings uh both much younger than kind of the older portly guy that's uh seems to be the primary uh barkeep who's very happily just broad smile happily serving drinks and conversing with various customers and then a young a younger boy and uh girl that are basically kind of helping out they will they basically pull drinks or grab food and stuff throw it on the trays and then take it out to the various tables uh out and around the uh the room the wait staff yep you see this this uh you see this large uh gentleman kind of stand up from near the the bar itself there's a chair that's just kind of tucked off into a corner he kind of comes lumbering over towards you Okay, now we'll get to that. Uh, it comes lumbering towards you. Uh, he appears to be of a species that you don't quite recognize. He's, he's much larger than the average human. He's got kind of a yellowish gold skin with, with kind of a, a similar color. Uh, almost not quite fur, but almost like fur across his, his skin, uh, across his uh, arms and everything. He's kind of oversized. Uh, ears and these this like tufts of hair that kind of come out in like points his face has kind of got a snout like appearance to it and he's got thick hair that kind of grows out in this like lamb chops that kind of come out and spread out from there with these large pointed ears mm -hmm. uh, he kind of grumbles at you uh, he's dressed in kind of normal garb a tunic a uh, simple green cotton tunic and some brown cotton uh, pants and some boots and stuff and he's got an apron on and he's got a, a towel that he's kind of got thrown over his shoulder he kind of grumbles up to you he kind of looks at you guys and is like well have a seat as he kind of moves past you and goes out the the door 
The hospitality here is top notch. <laughs> Take the nearest table to us. He is not boring anymore. That's free. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Is that what you're done? Mm -hmm. Is everybody. Alright, so you kind of yeah. move past, uh, you're kind of looking around, and it looks like the closest empty table would just be on the other side of the dwarves. So you kind of move around off to that side, and as you kind of settle in into the table, you're kind of looking at, there's the dwarves that are directly, um, where are a piece of paper? New map. Orcs, dwarves. There's an empty table here, and then there's a table here, and then there's a tables that kind of go along here. You guys sit in this table. As you're kind of sitting down, you're kind of looking at the the people that are in the, the tables around you. You got the dwarves, and then you got two. Is this the dwarves? Yeah, that's dwarves. Then over here you have a table uh, that's got a uh, two half elves. Um, a human and a, a gnome that are kind of before them sitting at, at this table here. And then this table has a singular char character sitting at the table, kind of in the back, hood pulled up over his head, kind of into the shadows, a couple of empty tankards on the table, and a, a plate with some half-eaten, uh, some sort of half-eaten potatoes and some sort of meat. He's just kind of sitting there. You see a, a short bow laying on the table, and he's just kind of glaring out across the room. He's kind of slightly stubbly around the, the, the chin and everything, like he hasn't shaved in, in a couple of days. And he's wearing uh, brown uh, studded leather armor, and this like heavy uh, forest green <coughs> cloak that kind of drifts out around him. And he just kind of looks looks intimidating for a two foot tall gnome <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of sitting over there and he's very quiet and he drinks his ale kind of glares in your guys' general direction but doesn't say anything i glare back when i realize i don't have an ale yet <laughs> fling my arm up to fix that okay <laughs> all right soon the uh the halfling the young halfling woman uh approaches and she's kind of got these these like uh reddish auburn kind of locks that kind of flow down around her, her shoulders and everything. Big bright smile, uh, glistening, uh, almost a, a honey brown colored eyes, uh, kind of chubby cheeks that are kind of flushed and everything from the heat of, and just being busy. She's got the, the, the bodice dress on with the, the apron with some various th things tucked into the pockets like a bar rag and everything. She's got a currently a tray with some empty mugs and she's passing by she's like what can i get you folks foreign spirits okay elvish wine elvish wine okay. mead our best the mead's fine okay i'll get what they're drinking the meat. one of each yes. got it yes <laughs> <laughs> with that she kind of bounces her way down towards the, the bar and you decide to randomly pull out a green orb? On the way in, yeah. I put it back in the pouch. Okay. That was random. I wanted to use it. Be prepared for a brawl. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what this thing does, so. Just kind of winging it. Okay. Did I see this orb? Um, yeah, unless she's trying to hide it. Just as we're walking in, I'm just like, I don't know what green does. Put it back in there. Oh. Does it look familiar? Um, you have seen this particular, not, not that particular globe, but you recognize that she's pulling the uh, glass globe out of her pouch that you guys acquired. Well, no, you weren't. Yeah, you were there. The, the random rogue that was with mm -hmm. the gnome way back in Bramble Marsh. Okay. Serafina is very interested in the music that is playing and she's tapping her foot along with it. Alright. Walking her head. Be bopping along. Um Alright, so you guys <laughs> Turn up some <laughs> Uh so you guys are sitting at a table. 
So, is this an this is an inn as well as a tavern? Yeah. So, what do you think the likelihood is that they have rooms here? Like, busy, isn't uh, they they seem. I mean, this looks busy. We can ask her when she brings the drinks. Yeah, there's probably about two dozen people all in all in this place right now. Mm. Okay. When she comes back from the drinks, I'm going to ask her. Okay. Uh, it doesn't take her long. She comes back with with uh, a, a large number of, of drinks. She passes out, you know, each to you, and then four drinks over to you. And she's like, kind of looks it up, and she's like, uh, separate or together? I'll pay. All right. Um, you owe me one gold and two silver. Okay. I'll pay her with two gold, and I said another round of ale when it comes to it. Very well. Hey, would you like any food? The kitchen is currently not open. Our cook left, but I'm sure he'll be back soon. He just left? Yeah, he was kind of miffed. Somebody complained about how rare the roast was, and how dare he left. they? Um, He's a little touchy. Whatever is left of the roast, I would love some. <gasps> All right. Anybody else? Serafina wants some. All right. But no potatoes. No potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take her potatoes. Right. So she takes an order and again turns and makes her way back towards the bar. Oh, hey, towards hey, the kitchen area. Hey, do you guys have rooms? Um, I'm sure we do. I will. I will check with me dad. Who's dead? Who's dead? The boring boar. Bring your clean ears up. Boar and bear. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's got the way around like shit. What is it actually called? <laughs> Bear. I mean, this is definitely not boring, though, with the music and obviously the company. Look at, you know, you guys were weird enough as it is, but look at all that. I think this was a good choice to come to. Yeah. What's it's our plan for tomorrow? I like the little angry man in the corner. The angry man in the corner. He's very attractive. <laughs> He's watching you. I know. Closer. You could ask him to dance. No, I don't dance. You could ask him to dance so you can watch. That's true. <laughs> Irvina likes that idea. <laughs> Get there and shake what your mama gave you. At this point, the, the uh, barmaid comes back. You haven't actually gotten her name yet. Oh, Not let me remedy letters. that. Let me remedy that. But, what's, uh, what's her name? Uh... Tara. 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 And is there, your family owns this place? Yes. She puts out the various trays of food and everything. Why is it called the boar and the bear? And she kind of points back behind the bar and you kind of look over there and you see the head of a boar and the head of a bear. Both of them huge. Because we thought it was called the boring bear, but this is great. No, you this thought. place is great. You were, I thought you were joking about Shh, it. She kicks silent at the table. <laughs> Like, no. It's named it's named for those two. Those are some pretty impressive kills. Did anybody get to eat them? I'm sure they did. I wasn't there. You'd have to ask him. She kinda nods in the general direction of the gnome across the way. And she kinda passes out the food and everything. Do you know if he dances for money? <laughs> no, he, I wouldn't ask him that. You're likely to be shot dead on the spot. So what's what's his name then? Is he a regular? They call him Spider. Spider. She walks away. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the tattoo. <laughs> wow! Go for it. She tears into the beat. <laughs> <sighs> so is there uh, potatoes? Are there any carrots no. mixed in? There's little onions and little carrots. Okay, I picked but the carrots But there's no out. potatoes because it was requested to be no potatoes. Oh, is it so it's one platter for all of us? Yeah, it's just a okay, big Okay, that's fair. Food. That's fair. I pick out, I'll put the, the carrots on the other side of the plate as far away from me as possible. Okay. And I eat some roast and some little onions. I'm eating the carrots. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> is there any bread that you could bring? 
Mm -hmm. There's a little platter of fresh baked bread that's kind of sliced down. We'll stick with that. Aaron's like, my character can have carbs. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want those not cooked meat. I think that you're going to get a horrible, horrible stomach pain from eating. From roast? Roast is cow, right? Mm -hmm. eh, it's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bloody, yeah. but it's it's cooked. Yeah. I feel like Cara would be a, a vegetarian. A fish eater. It's kind of hard to be a vegetarian when you're out at sea. Yeah. <laughs> All those vegetables growing in the open ocean. It's like, gee, cow, that thing is huge. Denmark's an like challenge accepted. <laughs> so are there any rooms available? Uh, she's like, yes, yes there are. There are... Th Hold on, I've already forgotten. And she leaves. <laughs> Shake my head and drink. You know I like what, her. though? I I associate with that. That's we can you see her pass out some more drinks and stuff through the area, and then come back around. She's like, "Yes, there are six rooms left available." Awesome. All right. Well, I think we we would all need one tonight. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll bring the ledger over, and you guys can sign it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's five silver a night per person. Just so you know. You want to do more than one night or you think you'll be into your house by tomorrow? How often do rooms fill up here? Uh, it comes and goes. Hmm. Honestly, as we're getting into the the cold season, as winter comes along, there'll be fewer and fewer people. Okay. So we just renew our rooms tomorrow. Yeah. Sounds good. And she, Tara walks off and later she comes back by with the book. It's five times as big as she is and twice as heavy. Pretty much. She plops it down and opens it up and passes around, pulls out and uncorks a, a little vial of ink and hands everybody a quill. It's like, just sign in. And she kind of really rummages through her pocket, pulls out five keys and kind of sets them on the, on the table. Divvy them up amongst yourselves, whichever ones you want. Grab a key. <laughs> sign the ledger and hand her the money and grab my key. All right, so everyone signs in. And I'm assuming you guys are deducting your your coin from your yeah. from your list. Yeah. Seraphina puts a little doodle next to her name too. Okay. <laughs> She's what like, can, why did you do that? She's like, that's very nice, dear. Because I wanted to leave her something that would make her happy. That's why. It's <laughs> already. Now she'll be happier. She closes the book so and heads back towards the. the uh, unless you have something you wanted to ask her. No. No. <laughs> I was, it was going to be a more of a general thing. Okay. Oh. There's a general in here? No. Be quiet. <laughs> so, so many crazy what's the plan for tomorrow then? <laughs> it sounds like everyone has things to do. Well, I'll figure in the morning we'll go to the, the, the ridiculously large building and we'll get those writs cashed in. We can go and get your house taken care of. It wasn't at the big building, was it? Uh, yeah, right, at, the at the cathedral. Mm -hmm. You said you had business inside. It looks like that didn't go well, so we can stick around at the church until you get that finished. Well, I mean, you wouldn't. I don't think I've mentioned that I need to go back. So. Okay. She just saw you <coughs> looking sad when you came out. <laughs> well, after that, get your house figured out, go shopping. I mean, we're going to have a lot of money. I don't know about you guys, but it's been a while since I've had that much coin. Are we gonna spend it all? Or do we want to go on a bigger adventure? We could go check out ships. Yeah, I mean that's my. What do, What are your plans? I'm sorry, but I didn't invite you on my ship journey. Find <laughs> 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 a ship for myself. But the ship has a crow's nest. <laughs> But I'm She's sad. <laughs> she wanted to go on the ship. No, uh, no I mean, that's not... We can stop. I don't need you all to save your money so I can buy a ship. I think when we get there, if she wants to go shopping, she can... But what if we go across the ocean to another place to go shopping? I'm fine with that. Just if I had money before, money's like the tide. It comes and it goes. Or mermaids. I don't know. There's crazy things out there in the ocean. <laughs> Have you ever been on the ocean, Winsu? I seen it. He sounds scared. <laughs> I seen you definitely it. been on the ocean. Yes, I've been on the ocean. I had to because 
from where I'm from. So. You were a long ways from home. <laughs> you didn't fly there. Sorry. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh shit. Shots fired. <laughs> Fuck your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your boat. <laughs> Winston will not stick up for you anymore. Oh, oh whatever. As he sips from his four mugs. <laughs> straws in all of them. <laughs> I don't think you can use straws without lips, man. It probably all tastes really good, except for mixing in the wine with it. That one I don't like. I slid that one over to him. <laughs> it's sneaky. Oh, two so me two meads and a dwarven it. spirits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, your wine is. Yes. We can go get. The Ritz, and then we can um, go turn them in, and we can go to my house if that sounds good. Check on the O'Briens. Would I eat like a bird? Would I mean, like, oh, I have to do all that kind of crap. Oh, yeah, it was <laughs> if you drink like a bird. Oh, yeah. No, nah, you, can, you can eat like a, a, a person. Like a real okay. boy. <laughs> Did you have a beak? I was kind of yeah. curious about that. Like, like when you <laughs> smile, how do you just you like... You just don't chew with your mouth closed. Okay. Boy, Aaron's gonna hate me. The car is as far away from him as possible. <laughs> Seraphina's a bit tipsy and she's w winking at the, the gnome over at the other table. <laughs> You've had like half your drink. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're all like maybe tipsy. a third. Dagmar, <laughs> uh, watch that one. I will watch her go bay that man to dance. Yes. <laughs> Do it. I'll flex. I'll flex at him if he causes her any problems. It's Have fine. Have you been in places like this? No. They're fun. There's lots of pretty people. I'm in actually there. personally hoping for a brawl, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't think we want a brawl. There's a lot of soldiers around here, and we haven't been paid yet. Let's not. I haven't had enough to drink for that to not make sense, so alright. Fine. Someone has to keep Dagmar in control. I have a crowbar. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on her. <laughs> she slides a little bit over. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. <laughs> what? Sits her back straight. <laughs> what time of night is it now? Um, probably nine-ish. Nine. Still early. Not super early, but not late enough for bedtime yet. Yeah. You know, we've been on the road for 10 days. I wonder if they have, like, bathhouses here. Well, did you not take a bath at any of the stops we stopped at? I was wondering what that smell was. I was busy. We stopped at, like, three inns on the way. <laughs> I was very day. busy. It's fine. <sighs> we were only there for a few hours anyway. I take my ale, and I get up from the table, <laughs> and I go find Tara. <laughs> Alright, right, she is currently over at the bar. Okay. Tara, do you have a bathhouse? Uh, well, we have baths here, but yes, there are also bathhouses in town. Alright. Um, I just need, like, a large tub of hot water. Alright, follow me. Okay. She, uh, drops a tray on the... I finish off my mug. Put it drops a tray on the bar and kind of leaves you around. <laughs> Kind of in a through a curtained area and down a hallway. Did the tray have empty cups or full cups? Empty. I put my cup on the tray. Okay. I am polite. Follow her. <laughs> follow, follow her in there, and uh, she kind of opens up a door, and you see kind of like a large inset stone pool, basically, and it's got a couple of spigots that you can basically pump water into it. Uh, one of them uh, is actually warm to the touch when you touch it. Nice. You know, she's like, towels, robes, um, I'm assuming you have a change of clothes, otherwise, take a robe, then you can walk to your room from there. Honestly, I would recommend uh, you possibly going to your room and dropping off your stuff and then coming back here. It's up to you. Alright. Check my key. What room did I get? Uh, 36. Holy shit, there's a lot of rooms in here. Where do I go for this? Third floor. Sixth room. That sounds like a lot of stairs. I'm just gonna stay in the bath. All right. Yeah. So, uh, anybody else doing anything specific? Uh, Serafina would like to know if there's a, some paper and a, a pen that she can use. Silas. A 
see what I can find. And a few minutes later, she comes back with that same bit of ink and the quill that she had before, but with a stack of like three or four pieces of plain paper. She just needs one. She writes on it, do you like me? Check yes or no. And she folds it into an airplane and shoots it over towards the table with the gnome. <laughs> um, Roll to hit. <laughs> See if it makes it to the table. That's a six. 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 Well, plus your dexterity. So, are ten. you proficient in paper airplanes? I will say you are even <laughs> proficient in paper airplanes. So you get to add your proficiency modifier. So you get thirteen so total. Thirteen. Nice. So yeah, it kind of goes, <laughs> does like a little loop, and then lands <laughs> next to his plate. He kind of, he's just kind of watches you throw it, lands. So he's like, picks it up. <laughs> <laughs> Tara comes over. Yes? Alright, she walks over to you, takes the, the ink, and the <laughs> walks back over to the table in the corner, puts it down, stands there for a minute, he's like... Folds it back up. He's going to see if he can throw it back to you. He, he, however, is not proficient in paper airplane. It's a skill. But that's okay. He will still get it over there. He's like... Whew. And he kind of lands over next to you. <laughs> Check the no. That's oh, no. <laughs> hard to get. <laughs> yes! I like the challenge. <laughs> and Tara's like, takes the, everything. He's like... I'm good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Goes back to, to doing stuff around the thing. <laughs> Alright, so as the night goes on, the rest you guys uh, eat, uh, bathe. I finish my bath, wrap all my shit up in a towel, and then come back out in a robe to sit back at the table and have another beer. Okay, so you, you finish your food, uh, finish your drinks, you bathe, basically kind of while away the, the remainder of the next couple of hours, just kind of relaxing before kind of making your ways off to various rooms and everything to to rest for the night. The rooms themselves are nice. Um, <coughs> definitely nicer than some inns that you've stayed in, but you've also stayed in nicer, uh, all in all. Um, simple simple rooms with with a bed. Uh, you see that underneath the beds, there's also like pull outs, like in case people are like sharing rooms or whatever for adventurers. There's a chest that has like a lock and there's like a little key. Your The room key actually works the lock on the chest and everything. So you have places to store your belongings. Cool. But you lay down and sleep away the night. Uh, waking up in the morning, um, you hear down below, you can hear the, the slight strumming of, of musical instruments already. In the morning? And Christ. you can also smell uh, pancakes, sausages, bacon, that makes uh, various uh, pa sweet pastries. Um, pastries. Yeah. Uh, just a variety of different things <clears throat> uh, coming from down below. You make your way back down into the common area. You notice that there's only maybe five people in total in this currently in the end, not counting the, uh, the staff. They're just kind of all sp split up at various tables very quietly eating their food. Spider is not here. Is it a pretty uh, loud place to late? Like, mm -hmm. like don't how long did sit down there and drink? Don't use them all Am I grumpy because I didn't get enough sleep because they were loud all night? Oh, they weren't like super loud all night. That's good. They have like, different like, floors. Rowdy too. bar. Yeah, three floors up too. If we're all in the third, I don't know. If... Yeah, plus could have been off in one of the back areas. Mm -hmm. True. But you guys gather up at the downstairs at the table, uh, order up varying uh, choices of meals between between uh, pancakes and pastries and sausages and bacon and no uh, potatoes. No potatoes. For those that want hash browns, there are hash browns. Uh, biscuits <laughs> with gravy, honey. I would like jams. a platter with a little bit of everything, with extra meat, and my own. Okay. So I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna eat kind of quickly, just stick to like proteins. 
Okay. And just like go out front and start like looking for a carriage because I know this could drag on with Dagmar in the breakfast bar. Which <laughs> 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 is not wrong. We have things to do. All so. right. Um, it's not very hard to, to flag down a carriage. Uh, you see that <clears throat> at this time of the morning, uh, the place is much busier than what you saw yesterday. There's a lot more foot traffic, uh, people going about uh, shopping at the various little uh, markets and, and shops and stuff that are here in this district. Um, you know that if it's this busy here, it's going to be crazy busy down at the Bayside. Down by the <clears throat> bay. So I'll kind of, I'll ask the carriage to wait for a minute and kind of go inside and Okay. You know, hail everyone's like, I got us a carriage. We should probably get going because this place gets crowded the later the day goes on. I scarf down the last of my platter and see if anybody else has food left over. Which is shoveling his sweet <laughs> rolls into his pockets. <laughs> yeah, they have basically it's like a, a, a honey and pecan glaze, uh, sweet rolls, and then they also have uh, cream puffs. I want a honey bun. <laughs> Do you have any cheese? Yeah, a couple of bits of cheese. <laughs> you see his pocket wiggle. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about your mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's been here. You Ooh, guys go out, the get into the carriage, and uh, ask him to take you where? Uh, Who has a slip of paper? Silen does. You said yeah. you would take it. Yeah. Did I? Oh, that's right. I have two writs of commendation. I say she has paper. I don't think it's the one. Yeah, I, ha I wrote the papers down. Okay. I thought we got a new paper. No. I'll say to Dagmar, why don't you hand him the address where we need to go? Okay. Um, I reach into my bag and I pull out a flask. And then I unscrew the flask and I pull the papers out. Okay. Just take them off a little bit because there was a little bit of liquid left in the bottom. And then I just unfurled them, and I'm like, North, and I'll just hand him the paper. He kind of looks at it, he's like, oh, very well. And he kind of takes <laughs> you along, kind of past, instead of get back down the road in which you came, he kind of follows along uh, a road that runs parallel with a wall. It kind of moves around to the, the probably the mo northernmost portion of the city. And he's like, here you go. It takes you about four blocks. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Wait, that's uh, two silver, please. I'll pay him, and then I will uh, take back my pieces of paper and put them back in the flask. All right. Uh, what you see before you is a fairly simple house, two stories with like a little stone wall that kind of wraps around the outside front of it. Uh, no gate, just kind of like an opening in the wall, uh, and you can hear some uh, sounds like uh, somebody maybe blacksmithing in the back side of the house. The door to the house right now is currently standing open, and, but all of the windows are currently shuttered. Walk towards the door? Yeah. Okay. You walk towards the door and you kind of peer in and you see uh, the door opens into a front room with some simple furniture in it, like couches and chairs and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise it's, it's pretty much empty. Uh, you don't see any artwork or like vases or anything like that. Nothing really all that decorative inside, but there is an emblem of Calmore that is mounted above the fireplace. Knock on the door. Okay, you knock on the door. Mm -hmm. There's no Can I call no out answer. and say hello? Mm -hmm. Hear the, the hammering stop. Round back! Then tink! Tink, I want to go tink. check out the blacksmithy, so I go I scuttle over there. Okay. Uh, so you all make your way around towards the back of the house. You follow a little path that kind of runs around the, the house and into the back, and you see kind of like a, a small open shed area where it's basically slightly covered with a forge, and there's like a couple of barrels and stuff, and you see this uh, blonde-haired uh, gentleman uh, hammering away just uh, completely shirtless, but he's got this leather apron on, and he's just hammering away at, at, a, at a piece of metal. And he sticks it back into the fire, and he kind of turns around, and he kind of shifts his hair around, and it kind of cascades around his head. He pulls off the, 
the, the apron and you see this broad muscular chest with thick arms, the ripped abs with like the sweat that just kind of glistens <laughs> off of him. He kind of steps forward and he kind of grabs hold of the barrel and he kind of dunks his head in, pulls it back out and he's like <laughs> and he kind of dribbles and cascades down around him. This man is beautiful. He's like underwear model, sexy guy. Which is weird because he looks almost exactly like Justin. Mm. If Justin were muscular. Man, there's got to be some resentment there. <laughs> but he just kind of shakes it off and he's got these, this like the hair is kind of this golden blonde, the color of like uh, autumn wheat and his eyes glisten like are like these pale blue, like like springtime clear skies, and he just kind of looks at you and he smiles, and you get it's it's like the sun just catches him just right for the ding, and he looks at you. He's like, "Well met, travelers. What can I do for you?" Is he wearing gloves? He is not. Is he wearing a wedding ring? He is not. <laughs> has forgotten all about Spider and is now enamored. Yeah. Looking between these two, and just like shaking my head and realizing like the guy didn't have a shirt on or gloves on and he's hammering like hot metal. He's, he's, he's a god. He's a god. Trying to remember the last time that I did blacksmithing topless. It's been a couple weeks. <laughs> Seraphina is intrigued by that as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we what have, can I do uh, for you? We have tiny pieces of paper from Justin. Oh, my brother is back in town. Brother? Nice. That's good. Uh, may I see what you have? Sure. Take my flask out, unscrew the top, take out my little bitty pieces of paper, unroll them, <laughs> hand them over. Seems like, Lingering oh. hand touch. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh. Seems that you are heroes. Quite. Well, please, allow me to go in, grab my uh, my shirt and my gear, oh. and uh, I will take you to the chapel and make sure that you get your, your reward. Do you have any water? I'm feeling kind of thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, of course. And he kind of goes... <laughs> Goes over to like a right here. <laughs> 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 goes over to a pitcher and pours some like slow motion pours you some cold water into it. Kind of turns and he's like, "Here you go." Thanks. <laughs> he's like, "By the way, I just hold it. I'm not gonna drink it. I just hold it." Winston gets right up by his face to see that shiny thing again. In his <laughs> My cat does that sometimes. She'll be like, "What have you got?" Like. <laughs> what is the shiny thing in your mouth? It's my teeth. <laughs> He's like, my name is Simon. Please. Oh, he has a name. <laughs> Winsu. Winsu. Kara. Kara. Tag one. Mrs. Simon. I mean, Serafina. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I go to shake his hand. I have a really strong handshake. <laughs> so does he. Can we turn this into a grappling check? <laughs> you want to just wrestle around in the dirt with him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will eventually let him go and go back to holding my water Seraphina, glass. Dagmar, and you, Elvish Sir. Oh, Silent. It's good to meet you, he says in Elvish. He doesn't like sunshine. It's, he's got a pale complexion. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll gather, as I said, I'll gather my things and uh, we'll go in that direction. And he goes inside and he invites you into his house. Uh, again, it's a very simple house. And he's like, uh, on the, the dining table, there are some, some breads and stuff. Uh, we we eat, eat simply here, but you know, if you're, if you're still hungry, please partake in what we have. I'm gonna lean down to Seraphine and be like, do you think he's blonde enough to forget his shirt? Cause that'd be... Great. I don't know, but I'm hoping you drop something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back in a little bit in uh, plate armor, <laughs> just this, <laughs> this polished uh, silver and gold full plate armor, uh, helm tucked underneath his his uh, arm. He's got a shield slung across his back, and he's got this long white cloak uh, cape, uh, much like what the rest of what the guard in the town. 
have with the gold border around it. In the middle of his chest, there is a goblet with uh, it has red gemstones that make up the uh, flame that kind of comes up out of the goblet and it kind of moves and shimmers, almost like actual fire. Do you make your own armor? Oh no, I actually acquired this when we slew the the giants off to the the east. There was a, a number of hill giants that were harassing the, the, the small town on the coast there and me and a, a handful of other adventurers went in and dealt with the, the, the menace. Yeah. And as a reward the church granted me this. Hill giant, or giants are hard in general. I've, I've fought a few myself. Uh, you just you mostly have to watch out for their feet. Yes, they are quite large. She's also killed a rat. So many rats. Started when I was four. I understand. In my younger adventuring days, which you're looking at him, you're guessing that was like maybe last year. Because he's he could be much more than maybe 22, 23. Is this that, creepy? It has a plus three against giants. <laughs> Plus <laughs> It does, though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he takes you to, uh, he hails a, a carriage for you guys, and you guys all pile in, and he pays t for a carriage to take you all the way back to uh, the cathedral. Is this like a suburban carriage? Because there's a lot of us at this point. <laughs> there's, there's six of you. Mm -hmm. Five and a half. Yeah. I could sit on someone's lap. <laughs> Simon's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we seem to have run out of seats. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's like, so is does my brother fare well? Oh yeah, we saved him from a dungeon. He was naked. <sighs> I feel bad for him. Me too, you obviously got the looks. <laughs> he just kind of chuckles. Uh, we're, we're twins, actually, but uh, while I was more inclined towards the physical activities as a youth, he was more inclined to his books and study. He handled the situation at Rowanwood pretty well, once we saved him. Well, he is not a warrior, nor really an adventurer. I, I offered to go with, but he seemed... Uh, hell bent, as it were, to 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 prove himself as a uh, worthy servant of Kamor. So I've got a lot of siblings. I understand you need to to go out and do things on your own. He just wanted to keep Simon from us. That's also I hate probably just you. I hate <laughs> just you. <laughs> You're no longer a believer. <laughs> so, other than the writ, what brings you to to the grand city of Arandia? Um, we're going to check on the uh, family property of mine. Oh, you are you are from around here? Originally, yes. Very nice. I uh, am quite fond of the, the town itself. Um, we, we moved here when I was relatively young, 13. Mm. So it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure being here in this particular city. What brought you guys here? Um, our parents were very interested in the idea of um, expanding their their studies in, in the, uh, the the religion and, and scholarly traits of, of Calmore specifically, but uh, that's that's pretty much what brought us here. This is basically the heart of the Calmorian religion, so. Mm -hmm. I remember from when we lived here. Well, I mean, it's only been... I've been gone for five years. I grew up here. Well, welcome back. With that, the carriage arrives at the cathedral. And he takes you inside, and you wind through a, a series of fairly narrow hallways that kind of in the back portion of the cathedral, uh, kind of lined with various doors, each one with, like, placards for different... Uh, ministries and, and, and bureaus within the, the, the order itself until you get to a large door it says uh, accounting and you go in you go inside 
and you see um, there is a dwarf and a human standing back behind the thing. The, the dwarf is a, a female um, with kind of deep uh, coal black hair that's kind of in a really thick braid that she's kind of got pulled over her shoulder with a large gold loop that basically holds the, the braid together. It's like a really thick uh, braid around her, sh hanging over her shoulder. Uh, she wears, she's wearing kind of a, a leather apron uh, over uh, kind of like, almost like a, a kilt, uh, a tartan style kilt. And she's got so like a couple of different like tools and stuff, not like metalworking tools or anything, but like uh, quills and pencils and bits of paper. Um, uh, there's an abacus that's kind of tucked off to one side, and she's got like these little wire rim glasses that kind of rests on her, her, uh, her, her nose, and she kind of looks up at you, and she's like, Eugene, and the other guy, the the human, turns around, and he's like, oh. What can I do for you? Simon steps forward. These grand heroes have brought forth these writs and are seeking to their payment for their reward. And the, you, the kind of plain looking uh, human just kind of glares at Simon a little bit. Kind of takes the, the writs, puts on his glasses. He's kind of pale, thin, uh, probably about the same age as Simon, but he's got the, the slight slouch that kind of gives him almost like a little bit of a, a hump to his back. Uh, the, the overly exaggerated uh, Adam's apple, um, thin face with eyes that are slightly oversized for, for his, his appearance. He just kind of looks at him, pulls out some glasses that make his eyes even larger, pulls out a quill from behind his ear and kind of, and then an abacus and he's like, chick, 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 chick. All right, wait here. And he goes over and pulls out a ring of keys, and he's like, starts unlocking some locks on the, on this metal door behind him, and goes inside. And you hear some rattling of coin and stuff. And soon he comes back out with the with this large, well, not large, but a decent sized chest. And he's like, plumps it down, and you can hear the coins rattle inside. He's like, here you go. Thank you, Eugene. You're welcome. Is there anything else I can help you with? I'm just watching one suit, but it's for a round of <laughs> <laughs> and shiny and money. Is a, I pop up in the chest. Is it in gold or in... It's in platinum. It's in platinum. Okay. All right. No, I think this will do. Thank you. Mm. Unless anyone else... How much is it? 11,000 gold, but in platinum. So one thousand one hundred to platinum. You're pretty good at math. I am an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna pick up the chest and I'm gonna walk towards the door. Whew. It's pretty heavy. You're actually kind of surprised that that scrawny Eugene could have actually lifted this thing. Yeah. All right. I'll turn to Simon and say, "Sat." Do we have any more business here with you guys? Did we need to sign anything? Well, he kind of brushes his hair back. Um, unless you need aid with anything, um, I assume that our business is done. But I like to think that we're friends now, so if ever you are in need of a, the strong arm of a, a paladin of Calmor, always feel free, you know where I live. Yes, we do. This is all just coming in from the hallway because she's out there with the chest. <laughs> would you like to stay forever? And where would you guys like to go next? Well, Silent is going to head back to the the main part of the, <coughs> the chapel. Let me dip your mind real quick. Okay. Uh, you go in and you see the the uh, the uh, cleric that you were speaking to the night before, and he kind of recognizes you as you come in, yeah. and he quickly darts back. Uh, into one of the back rooms. Hiding okay. from him? A couple, or of, a couple of seconds else? later, you see him come back out with two other people. Uh, one in uh, 
similar dress to him, uh, the the red and gold robes with the the uh, the gold sash around the the middle. Yeah. Uh, he's got like the little the little cap on his head that's uh, red with the gold trim on it. And there's another gentleman that's in uh, armor. He looks more like a guard. So does it look like they might be meeting to detain me or just? You're not really certain. The the guard, well, he looks like a guard. He's very got a, a very stern look. Uh, and the uh, cleric you spoke to the night before looks exceedingly nervous. But the uh, older uh, priest, which you assume is probably uh, one of the, one of the bishops from a higher ranking cleric in the church, is mostly passive. He doesn't look aggressive or anything like that. He's just kind of mild looking. He's not holding a torch or bundles of twigs. So if I were to do an insight, <laughs> can I do an insight check just to see sure. if I can gauge a? It's going to be a total of twenty. Um. The guard is definitely putting up a an aggressive front. Um, you don't know for certain that he plans on arresting you, but he is definitely trying to make sure that you realize that he is there just in case things go poorly at the very least. Okay. Uh, the younger cleric that you spoke to the night before is terrified. You can tell just by his mannerisms, the way he kind of constantly looks back over his shoulder and stuff, that he would much rather not, not be here, be involved in this situation at all. However, the, the older, higher-ranking cleric seems... You, you, you don't get much okay. off of him. All right, well, I'll walk up. He's like, Sir, it is brought to my attention that you have been cursed. Uh, I am afraid I have. What? Do you guys follow me? Because I... <laughs> I don't have anywhere else to be. I don't know. I've got this <laughs> empty chest now. It's not empty. I divvy the gold. Platinum. Platinums. Okay, so you're sitting out there counting out platinum and stuff. Sure. We'll go with that. Alright. So he's like, puts on a, a glove and he kind of reaches up to kind of turn the necklace and everything. Talia, you, sir, are in dire straits. While I will not proclaim you a threat to the church and the crown, I must warn you that there is nothing that we can do for you. Only the, the blood of the Deshay family can remove this particular curse. I see. And as you know, that dark family, well, let's just say I wish you the best of luck. Well, I thank you for taking a look at it anyway. And I, I kind of just nod to the, the terrified cleric. And then <laughs> you, I, you can see that he's, he looks at you. He kind of shies away, and then he just kind of mouths, sorry, at you. All right, then I will, I guess, uh, go back and join the rest of the group. Uh, as you're leaving, the, the uh, guard just follows you all the way out to the, the courtyard, and he just watches you as you join up with the group. <laughs> These stacks are yours. All right. So everyone gets 220 platinum. Yeah. And when we're done divvying the coin, I'm going to knock on the door to accounting. Okay. Just, okay, just walk in. Alright. Okay. Give them the empty chest. Okay. Give it to the dwarf, she seems friendlier. Alright. Hmm. Eugene doesn't deserve an empty chest. Okay. There we go. I'll go back out front and close the door quietly behind me. Alright, so what are you guys doing next? Well, Carter wanted to check out her state um, you guys home. are done with your business I mean we got paid so I was don't confused. forget your we shield didn't too. follow you in there did we I mean that would 
be Are kind you of still keeping it secret? Um, I haven't told anyone yet, so... The shield that you so want you to come back out front? Yeah. I guess it just depends on if you followed me or if you stayed with Kara while she was counting out the... I would... Dagmar. Uh, yeah, I, I stayed yeah. outside. I don't... Seraphina stayed with Dagmar and they were talking about Simon. So you know, the windows and the tiles were very high. And then once you does something, so I don't know if he's actually planning on... Definitely. He seems... God, he's like telling the rest of the group or anything what he saw. The other night. Wins is gonna keep eating secrets. <laughs> and honey biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying outside to kind of keep them from getting into trouble. Okay. <laughs> so I like to punch things, but I'm pretty level headed. Alright, so while you guys are kind of standing around outside waiting for him to come out, uh, you notice that there's a bulletin board that's not too far off from the front of the cathedral. Uh, it's got a number of various. Uh, postings and stuff on it. Uh, some of it is simple as like uh, kind of recruiting posters for the, uh, the military, uh, uh, recruiting posters for the church, uh, posters uh, talking about upcoming uh, social events for the, the church or, from, or even for the, the palace itself. Uh, but nestled in with uh, part of the um, the bulletins is a poster. Yeah, read it out loud. Want to live? Get it out loud. Okay. I think it's a K. It's a K. Cornelidia? Uh, wanted alive, Cormeldia Ingress, 500 gold reward. Uh, description says, unknown, rumored to have a strange bone prosthetic in place of her right foot. Wanted for questioning on the circumstances of their involvement in the murders of Leia and Tobias Eskeld. Warning, Ingress is a practice mage with a history of dabbling in necromancy. Experience team required. Posted by the Light's Watch, 21st of August, 489. Fuck. Do I know the... The family that they're talking about? Um, only vaguely. But you can't really recall much about them at the moment. Sounds like quick money to me. Maybe after we go by my house, maybe think about some odd jobs. Until we figure out what what we want to do. Yeah. Do you want to take the poster? Yeah. It looks like it, based off of the date, it's been up there for about three weeks. Yeah, we'll take it. Just take it down off the bulletin board. Tuck it away. Put it in a different pocket than the sticky buns. <laughs> <laughs> So you make your way towards the uh, to Bayside, and as you get closer and closer to Bayside, the roads get more and more congested. Uh, after a while, the uh, I'm assuming you guys are taking a carriage because that's pretty much what you've been doing. It's what's time. done, apparently. Uh, but after a, after a short distance, uh, as you get just into Bayside, you guys just abandon the carriage altogether because it's not moving. So you pay the the driver, the two silver it would have taken you to get there as they agreed upon amount and just kind of began making your way through the various crowds. Uh, you see uh, numerous shops just kind of lying either side of the street and you get the the bay out to, to your one side of you. You hear the seagulls, hear the, the crashing of the various waves and everything, uh, ringing of the bells on, on ships and sailors uh, yelling to one another. Uh, there are various street vendors and everything that have like carts that they're basically pushing along, uh, selling various things, basically if they don't have a shop or whatever, just kind of uh, various foods, uh, drinks, uh, knickknacks, like uh, necklaces, uh, just a variety of different things that you can purchase. As you make your way ever southward following along the, 
the the uh, the boardwalk area, which the boardwalk used to be the main harbor for the old city, mm -hmm. but after the after the city expanded, they basically divided the wards to a north and south ward, and this area just became all shops. Uh, some of the older warehouses have been uh, reconfigured to basically have uh, shops inside of them, almost like little mini malls, almost basically warehouses that have a variety of different stalls and stuff in it to uh, sell different types of wares. Uh, as you're passing by one shop, you hear uh, a roar of some sort of like large cat or something. You kind of look inside and you see that this shop has a n like numerous cages and everything. And you see uh, one large cage that has a, a panther kind of stalking back and forth uh, to one side of it. What's the price tag on that one? you want to go in and look? Uh, I would like to window shop as we pass by. Uh, you can't see the, the price tag on it. Dude, I want a panther. Catch up with the rest of the group. <laughs> All right. Uh, soon the, 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 the various shops and everything kind of give way to a more of a, a, a broader range of different things. Like a, there'll be a couple of houses and then like a cafe or like a small tavern or a pub. And as you get closer and closer to the island, uh, eventually you arrive at a, a kind of a, a good sized uh, home. It looks uh, vaguely Victorian in its overall design. It's got the turret to one side. It's about three stories tall. There's a stone wall that run, that about five feet tall that kind of runs around the exterior of it. And there's like a very small uh, front courtyard just inside that's basically just large enough for basically say a carriage to kind of come around there's like a, a, a small fountain in the center of it and there's like a little circular uh, co cobblestone courtyard and a carriage house off to one side um, the gates are currently closed uh, old iron slightly rusting uh, gates how much worse does it look than when I left it uh, not a lot the the gate obviously needs a little bit of maintenance but the house itself looks good. The yard is, is well maintained. Uh, you know, the here. front is, is smaller than, say, the backyard. There's actually a whole backyard back there. I'm assuming the O'Briens are a bit older. Yeah, they're, they grew up. The, they're the, last time, the last time you saw them, they were, they were in their early 80s. Mm -hmm. awesome. So they are old. If not dead. Hmm. All right. Um, do I see anyone outside the house or any kind of activity? No. Uh, right now the courtyard is, is empty, the gate is closed. Is it unlocked? Uh, it is not locked, it is just latched. So I'll go through it. Alright, you kind of open it up and it squeals loudly as you kind of open up the gate. The hinge is pretty badly rusted. Um, That's kind of... Yeah. Uh, as you walk up forward, there's like a series of stone steps that walk to go up to a a porch that kind of wraps around the, the front of it. There is a uh, swing, a wood like porch swing that's just kind of kind of drifting lazily in, in like the breeze coming off the bay. And you go up and you just want to open the door and go in. You want to knock. How do you want to do this? I'll knock. All right. You reach up and you knock on the door and you wait a few minutes and soon the door opens and you see this young boy about 12 years old you would guess maybe 13 not really certain uh he kind of looks looks at you and he's like hi can i help you uh hello my name is Kara. what's your name me simon another one <sighs> do you live here simon I do, well, no, I'm just visiting my grandparents. Oh, who, who are your grandparents? Oh, uh, Grandma, Grandpa? Uh, are the O'Briens here? Yeah. My grandma, Grandpa, there's a lady here, and she's got some weird friends. Thanks, kid. And a few minutes later, you see this kind of, uh, um, Middle, middle height, average height, uh, older lady with a very severe bun tied up around her head. Uh, dark dress with the uh, little stained but, but nice 
a frilled apron kind of around her, and she's like, Mistress Kara, I haven't seen you in so long. And she kind of rushes forward and gives you a big hug, and he's like, are these your friends? I'll hug her back, because she's the first, you know, I haven't seen yeah. very many. She's the closest thing I have to family now. And she's um, like, Simon, Simon, go get, go play in your room for a little bit. He's like, ah, I wanted to see what the bird guy sounds like. <laughs> she makes a hinge sound. Hangs his head and you should goes up it. the... <laughs> I just say what he just said back to me. Oh, I wanted to hear what the bird guy sounded like. He's like, that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> coolest thing ever. Winston, shh. Winston, shh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she kind of reaches out, grabs a spoon, and kind of smacks it a little bit. It's like, ah, oh, fine. Isn't it a game of Simon Says, Wensu? And I'm looking at the spoon, like, looking at Wensu, looking at the spoon. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but um, you go inside the house and she uh, uh, brings tea and cookies and basically sits down and you kind of go over the whole thing of what's been going on over the past few years and she's like, it is so good to have you home. Are you staying for good this time? Um, I'm not sure what my plans are. I just wanted to come back and make sure the house was still here and that everything was still okay. You've been getting the money I've sent. Oh, yes. And, of course, we have the income from the warehouse. Mm -hmm. you know, might. Things could be a little bit better, of course. I mean, the house is large and, and quiet. Our grandson is here for, was, was here for the fall, but he should be returning to his, his parents shortly. Hopefully, before winter sets in. Have there been problems with anything with the warehouse? No more than usual. I mean, to be fair, that we still have the problems with the uh, the the uh, uh, the Jenkins uh, Fisheries trying to acquire the rest of our properties on the wharf. But you said the rest. You know, the warehouse and the surrounding, uh, well, we still own a space on the pier. Well, thank you very much for keeping the house in order. And Absolutely. And about this time, the, the old man comes in. He's like, oh, so sounds another little tray of clinking glasses and everything. He's like, it is so nice to have you back. I'm feeling like massive guilt that these old people have been like, care of my house. <laughs> like, well, they live there, so yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, and still, they, like, they could go have their own... They could have retired, to, you know, <laughs> like, you know, to take care of someone else's house. Um, well, I'm, I'm not here to move back in and, you know, kick you out by any means. And I, I came back to kind of make sure the house was fine and check in with you guys. Well, it's... It's been peaceful, to be honest. We're, we're very grateful that, that you have allowed us to, to remain here in the house. I mean, we've lived here for so very long. I wouldn't know what to do if we were to be kicked onto the streets to <laughs> fend for ourselves. Do they have, would they have their own quarters? Kind of mm -hmm. like, like a... They actually have pretty nice rooms in the, okay. in the house. So everything else would they would have left alone though? Yeah. At this point, there's a at the main door, and the old man's like, "Oh, look at that!" And he kind of rattles and slowly makes his way towards the front door. And then it's that behind us where we're sitting, basically. Mm -hmm. Kind of turn around and see who's who we open. As up you to. turn, you see a um, tall gentleman, kind of thin, of slight of build. Uh, but with a handsome face, very pale skin, um, with kind of almost uh, deep circles kind of under and around the eyes, giving him almost like a natural dark makeup effect around his eyes, uh, which glow a brilliant green color. Uh, his, uh, at the top of his forehead, you see these two black horns that kind of curl up about three to four inches in length that just kind of curl up from his 
uh, brow, and there's like a slight uh, widow's peak of black, silky raven black hair that kind of glistens almost blue in certain light. Um, kind of looks, he smiles and bows very deeply, and as he smiles, you see he's got some very sharp uh, canines in his mouth, and just behind him, you see a slightly devilish tail uh, lashing around. Um, he puts his hands together, uh, and you see black fingernails that kind of come to very nicely sharpened, almost claw-like nails. And he kind of bows deeply. I have been told that you are heroes. That potentially you could uh, aid me in a quest. My name is Dorian. Dorian Dichet. And with that, we'll close it off for the evening.